joining us now is OG Okpe with stories trending around the world. Hello, OG. Good morning, Mr. Dapper. <laughs> you look great in your gray suit. Thank How you. are you? Thank you. Great. Good morning, Miss Blue. Hi, <laughs> <Good morning. laughs> You look lovely. Thank you. Good morning, Rufai. How are you? You too, as yeah. always. Hello. Always. Hello. Ojinika. Hello. Always. Hello, Oji. Uh, this one is now Dr. Omorua. Oh, really? No. What happened? <laughs> what happened? Don't, happen. don't, don't join it. Nothing happened. You, okay. you missed that part of the uh, inside baseball. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> she's always our queen. That's all I know about this one. <laughs> all right. Well, good morning to you, viewers. As the year 2020 draws to a close, many are having to reflect on the year that was. It's time to draw up New Year resolutions, and Christians are preparing for prophetic declaration. Well, many will agree that the year 2020 took an unprecedented turn from expectations and prophecies made at some crossover service across Africa, as we'll see in this video. This look. year will be the best you ever lived in your life. And coming 2020, from the 1st of January, higher. Throughout 2020, you will not need any form of medication. In the name of Jesus, just look to your hand and thank God for this prophecy over your life. Things that bring pain will be taken away in 2020. Things that are wicked and difficult will be taken away in 2020. This is going to be a year of series of joy. The reason is, it's going to be a year of series of victories. Year 2020, your hands will not lack money. Amen. Your hands will not lack money. Amen. 2020, wow. all you have been dreaming to achieve, all you have been praying to touch, all you have been believing God for, it will happen in 2020. Hey. You may have entered 2020 single. I prophesy, 2020 you shall be married. Hey. 2020 equals supernatural shift 2020 is the year of perfection in a blaze of glory the year 2020 has been the third the year of perfection well i guess a lot of pastors did not predict covid 19 but i guess we'll go on a short break before we come back to discuss stay with us Welcome back to the morning show here on the Arise News ch uh, channel. Still with us is OG with stories trending around the world. I know you already, uh, you know, took a story there. Yes. And, um, uh, 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 <laughs> Uh, this no, one. let us start to... with you, Dr. Bati, since you opened the segment. Uh, okay, I mean, I was just trying to be cautious because, you know, people quote uh, in this kind of situation, they quote the Bible. Mm -hmm. They say, uh, do not touch uh, my um, anointed. Okay. And do, my prophet, let, no and do my prophet no harm. Okay. Psalm 105. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the kind of response you are likely to be getting. And here in Nigeria, you know, people believe a lot in prophecies. Uh, every year end like this, they're looking up to their pastors, uh, to spiritual leaders, to give them an idea of what will happen in the new year. And I guess because of the uncertainty that surrounds our lives, uh, we just want to be given an opportunity to know what is uh, coming ahead. And people then idolize pastors. They take their words as gospel truth, and then they confirm, uh, they confirm on them a certain kind of immunity. So whatever a pastor says, they just take it hook, line, and sinker. Now, we've seen these uh, prophetic declarations for the year 2020. As you said earlier, I didn't hear anything about COVID coming, uh, you know, in the future. It's about a series of joy. Uh, would anybody say that in the year that was 2020, we experienced a series of, uh, of joy? Um, one of the pastors talked about a supernatural shift. Okay, maybe there was a supernatural shift because there was something unknowable, you know, confusing about uh, COVID-19. And then uh, there was something about uh, your hands with uh, collect a lot of money. Well, 
the persons who were retrenched, the people who are unemployed, as at the end of 2020, uh, would, they, would they say they had access to a lot of money? So the thing is just for people to be cautious. Why prophecies can give us hope, uh, we should also not turn pastors into God yeah. or think that they have any immunity uh, from uh, criticism. But this is a matter of faith. And when people believe in something, no matter what you tell them, they will believe it. Maybe it energizes people to go into the new year with restored energy. Don't be surprised. By uh, tomorrow morning or uh, two days' time, you will see here the same messages. <laughs> you know that those who don't have husbands will get uh, okay, that, husbands. That's the those one that who are not married, they will get wives. For Rufai. Uh, well, Rufai, you came into this year um, unmarried. Are you uh, uh, married now? <laughs> You are, calling him out. you are calling him out on international <laughs> TV. How is that a bi anybody's business? Yes, are you going to get married this year? Refine. Uh, Refine, don't mind that. Uh, you no. have a right to remain uh, celibate. Oji, oh, 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 that's my private bedroom matter. <laughs> <laughs> it's not public matter. But, but one thing has to be said. Yes. Uh, I would not. So a lot of people are waiting. Refine, go gun blazing up. I would not go gun blazing up pastors. Why? Because you see, they are just declarations, prophetic declarations. And I think Dr. Bati has said it, it's the overpiety of people or people getting a little bit overboard that makes them feel that, oh, this is it. These pastors are dealers in hope. Because you see, for a painful world, we need to sell a lot of hope. And what they do is hope in the word of God. Hope tomorrow will be great. Hope your last year will be better than the other one. And they can have different coinage as a year mantra, or sort of like a year almanac for it. Supernatural blessing, year of perfection, year of divine shifts, year of breakthrough. It's just a way to be able to rekindle the hope of a lot of people. You see, the ones I have a problem with are the pastors that have false prediction. You know, th there are two layers. These ones, the highbrow ones, the popular ones, they just declare hope. But the second layer is the ones that want to blow quickly. Those ones start to say specific events. They say things like, oh, three plays will fall down this year, four plays. Those ones even sell their book of prophecy. Those are the ones I am really scared about. Because those ones lead people astray. But what is most important is the fact that we are all dealers in hope. And if you read the Bible, we should hold on without wavering to the hope we confess. Right. So even if, despite it's been a terrible COVID year, mm -hmm. that you go to church on 31st night and the pastor says it's going to be your best year ever in 2021, it's best you claim it because sometimes we need our hope to survive. Okay, it's indeed. crazy well, living I, in an economy like this where there are no exactly. jobs I, I, or anything. Yes, so I it's just work. best you claim that hope because you need it to survive. And, and Rufai, truthfully, I mean, who says that some of these prophecies did not affect some, pa some co uh, members of the church possibly yeah. in the year 2020? Yeah. yeah. I mean, they people make you. money. Yeah. Africa has been spared the worst of the pandemic. But Dr. Bati talked about verses, and I do have one. Determine Deuteronomy 18.22 mm. talked about when a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not nor come to pass. This is the thing which the Lord had not spoken. And that's what Rufai was trying to say about false prophecies. So talking about COVID-19, perhaps, maybe, I don't know, I'm not a prophetess, maybe God did not show well, them quoting, But since we are quoting no, the no. Bible, Luke 6, 39, mm -hmm. check your Bible. It says, can the blind lead the blind? Otherwise, but, both of them will end up in the ditch. And that is why people must just beware at all times. They but, should not but, take... Just a moment. They should not okay. take everything, you know, we'll even if it is about that. hope, mm -hmm. it's about to help you psychologically. Mm -hmm. Don't just take it hook, line, and sinker. Because there is a sub-economy that has yeah. developed around this period, yes. every year, around predictions and prophecies. You will see people selling small, small pamphlets. Yeah. And every month, they will go and check. No, that hey, was, this is what that pastor, yeah. this is what pastor said uh, yes. will happen in January. And then some of the pastors Naira. themselves, they will come out and say, oh, what I predicted will happen in March. Okay, I saw it. This is what I said will happen. People should just be careful. Yeah. Yeah. Right. All right. But Dr. Talking Abbas, you are spot on. Low cases huh? of you, are, you are spot on. And I should say it very strongly. You are spot on. And there are some things people pastors should not do. Like I remember a certain pastor that was predicting who will score penalty kick during a youth camp. <laughs> <laughs> 
We all know that. But what I just want to say is that, Dr. Bati, mm-hmm. the prediction that plenty money will be in Yazov, it came to people that did COVID-19 projects that took money. Did plenty money enter there? Those who worked in telecoms made money, streaming services made money. And, so, and the stock okay. market didn't do too bad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so are you ready for your crossover <laughs> service, guys? There will be no just crossover a thing. Yeah, no, no. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's move on. We'll take another story. Well, talking about the COVID-19 low cases in Africa, Nigerians have taken to social media to criticize Bologna philanthropist Bill Gates over his recent comment on the low cases of COVID-19 across Africa. The philanthropist, in a recent statement shared on his website, said it was possible that the figures provided were not real because of the gaps in the healthcare systems in Africa. The Bologna and his wife, Melinda Gates, had predicted that Africa would be worse hit by COVID-19 at the beginning of the pandemic. Their prediction, however, has been way off the mark, as the figures of infections from Africa have remained relatively low. Some Nigerians on Twitter have questioned the Bologna's credibility. Well, let's take a tweet from Philip real quick, who wrote, The credibility of Mr. Bill is now questionable around the world, and more so in Africa. Also, he has huge stakes in the top global pharmaceutical industry. That says a lot. While others are also saying that, you know, his comment, you know, he's showing concern because of his uh, vaccines that he wants to import into Africa. But, you know, this is not the first time that Bill and Melinda has come under fire with these comments that they make. And really, I am not sure why they make these types of comments. I think there are certain things that you should just leave you know, lying low. I mean, we all know that there are gaps in the healthcare system, but it is a sensitive issue. At this point, I am not in uh, support. If there's anyone who understands some of the inadequacies in Africa, yes. healthcare system, education, it would be Bill yes. Gates and Melinda Gates. We all know. But unfortunately, there are some things, like you said, that, yeah. you know, would never be the way we think they should be. It is difficult for a lot of people to fathom that uh, for the first time, the world can learn, for the, maybe, maybe for the first time, uh, the world can learn from Africa. We had seen right. leadership in the beginning of this pandemic like never before from African leaders. And we have also had experiences in, in health crisis, in pandemics. So we yes. understand how to quickly get things working and so many other things. We have a youthful population. We have good weather uh, in, in the instance of this pandemic that has helped. You know, we have a situation where people really, because of the deficiency we have in, in power, electricity, a lot of people would rather stay outside. And virologists have said, you know, the, the virus is difficult to a- accumulate and build up outside in open atmosphere. So there are yes. so many things we can look at. And, uh, you know, comorbidities yes. that exist in people who are in other parts of the world, we do not have them here. Um, Mr. Mr. Bill Gates just has to let this go. I love uh, that. There's a fear yes. that there's a hidden pandemic inside of this pandemic. Um, I agree that we are not doing a lot of testing like the rest of the world are not doing. Uh, we might not be having the, re- the actual figures. No. Like the rest of the Correct. world, we're not having the actual figures. I There's agree. nothing spectacular and different, you know, in what he's I agree he's with you 100%. Nothing will happen. If you remember, just recently, Melinda said, I see dead bodies. That really hit home for me at that point at, uh, I mean, at this one. Dr. Bate, a quick comment before Well, I'm, before I'm not we sure we even have up to three minutes left yeah. on the program, but it's as follows. This is not the first time. This is not the first time this will happen. You will recall, as far back as April, May, uh, people attacked uh, Bill Gates and his wife, and they developed uh, in the process this Gates conspiracy theories. Yeah. And uh, Mr. Gates became the bogeyman of COVID-19 uh, conspiracies. You know, they turned him into the uh, voodoo doll of uh, COVID-19. He got blamed for everything including the fact that he wants to uh, introduce vaccines so that he can make more money. And I think it's unfortunate that that is the case. Uh, Maybe this is a case of the poor, uh, not like in the face of the rich. But the truth is that the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation had contributed over $300 million to global public health uh, programs, polio vaccination and all of that in different parts of the world, even in terms of research for COVID-19. Mr. Gates has been in the forefront. But... One of the reasons they hold against him, in 2015, when he gave a TED talk, I think in, somewhere in Canada, he had predicted that the next major challenge that the world will face will be you know, a pandemic that will stretch the uh, capacity of uh, health infrastructure uh, all over the world. And that's what happened. So they said, oh, OK, he must have known that this will happen. But of course, you know, somebody who is involved in research yeah. can predict trends or possibilities. Absolutely. What has he said this time? He says he's surprised that numbers are low in Africa. 
that perhaps maybe this is as a result of the fact that not enough contact tracing and testing is being done. That does not constitute a crime, in my view. No, it so doesn't, I think but it is most very people are unfair to Yes, me. at this point. Well, thank you, guys. I will see you next year. I'm taking my break. Oh, you are taking yes. your vacation. <laughs> yes, I will okay. miss you. Enjoy thank you. Enjoi yourself. Miss you guys, too. Right. Rufai, will miss you. <laughs> I'll miss all of you guys. Well, have a uh, happy uh, new uh, year. Uh, what am I going to uh, say? Uh, 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 so you are vacating, right? You are going on holiday. <laughs> well, I'm taking my leave, not a it's, holiday. It's vacation day. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> 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 Happy New Year.